If I were to tell you that with a few changes to your financial plan, your tax bill in retirement could be lowered by 40, 400, or even more, $1,000, how would you feel? The good news is, is that saving tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes in retirement is very doable for every Canadian. And there are a few steps that'll get you there and we'll cover that in this video. Saving taxes in retirement is by far the number one thing people are looking to do. And one scenario that keeps coming into our office again and again and as I have phone calls is I've retired, maybe I've been retired for a few years or I plan to retire and for the first couple of years of retirement, I'm gonna live off my tax or savings account, a non-registered account or even more common is you know, some cash that I have. Maybe it's a, a severance package, maybe it's an inheritance, but I have cash and I'm gonna live off that. So I wanna break down our software and actually show you what this scenario looks like, the total tax, income, all of that. So let's jump into it. So we're looking at Dave and Ruth YouTube, which if you've been following us for a while, you've seen them a few times. I wanna just jump into their assets here. So Dave has a RSP of 300,000, a TFSA worth 40,000, and they have a joint cash account. They got a bit of an inheritance, and their intention is to live off that money and a bit of their TFSA for the first couple of years of retirement, and then start digging into the RSP. Ruth has very much the same, 400,000, a little bit more RSP, 50,000 TFSA, and then they share that joint cash account. As far as their government benefits go and that kind of stuff, I put them at about 75%, both for Ruth and for Dave. Uh, starting at 65, I'm not gonna play around with that in this base scenario. So again, they're entering retirement and they've said, look, we're not touching our RSPs for a couple of years, basically living off that cash account and a bit of the TFSA. If I go to Ruth, it's essentially the same thing, drawing down that cash account, touching the TFSA, and no RSP until a bit later. So if we jump into this, you're gonna see a combined income that meets their needs. So they have about $67,744 of after-tax in their pocket income, a very nice income in retirement, and definitely meets their needs. So they said, you know, Adam, I like this plan, doesn't really uh, hurt us at all, meets our income needs and all of that. But what I wanna look at is their total tax bill. When I click on their total household tax bill, you'll see a number of $213,210. So that's the total tax bill they're going to pay from now until life expectancy within the plan, which if I scroll down here, you'll see we put the life expectancy at age 87 for this scenario because that is life expectancy here in Canada for a couple that's 60 years old. So if they live to life expectancy, they're gonna pay about $213,000 of taxes. Now you can also see here if they die a bit earlier, like let's say age 80, uh, there's still about $100,000 in estate tax. So keep this in mind, you know, using cash or TFSA account, non-taxable income, you can see for the next two years, and again, we come across this a lot, almost for three years, they pay zero tax, which on the surface sounds great. But I'll tell you this, if you have a zero tax years in retirement, eventually that tax bill catches up to you. So what I wanna look at now is, you know, let's rejig Dave and Ruth just a little bit, and let's level out this tax bill a little bit through retirement. So what we've done for Dave and Ruth here is you can see the RSP, we convert it to a RIF, start drawing it out. So we're pulling about 25,000, then it dips down to 20,000 once CPP and OAS start at 65. Again, not playing with CPP and OAS in this scenario. I just wanna show you just basic money management and the importance of where you pull money from in retirement and how much it can affect your tax bill. So we're still touching that cash account a little bit, depending on your know, money in, money out, how much we need. 25 out of uh, Dave's RIF account and out of Ruth's RIF account, we're pulling a bit more just because she has a bit more in it, about 30,000. Again, a little bit out of that non-reg account as well. If we go to a combined view, you can see their after tax in their pocket income is 68,174. So a few hundred dollars more than the previous scenario. So A, that's good. They have more money after tax in their pocket to spend. So check, that's an absolute win. But what I wanna look at here is the total tax bill. If I click on the total tax bill, you'll see we've gone from $213,000 to $170,000. So not only do they have more after tax money in their pocket every single year from now until age 87, so that's a huge win, but they're paying CRA less money over time as well to the tune of about $43,000. So just a small adjustment in their plan, they've saved $43,000 in taxes and they have more to spend on an annual basis 
after tax. So we look at this and say, look, this is one small adjustment and I'll jump into a second adjustment here too. But even if you stopped here, you'd be much better off than you were just kind of running your own scenario. Don't overlook the tax planning in retirement. I have the conversation day after day. For most people leading up to retirement, you have one income stream, you have taxable income. There's not a lot of tax planning other than you know, top up your RSP, look at some TFSA, donate some money. There's a bit of tax planning you can do. When you hit retirement, you're gonna have CPP, OAS, in this case, RIF and TFSA. So that's four incomes and there's two of them. So you have eight income streams coming in. You have a lot more flexibility with tax, income flow and tax planning. The other byproduct of a plan like this is if I jump into age 80 again, again, the other scenario is about $100,000 in estate tax. And here we're only left with about 38,000. So if the client died a little bit earlier than expected, not only have they been paying less tax ongoing, they have more money in their pocket, but their estate's gonna pay less tax at the tune of $38,000. And again, that wipes out by about age 85. So a much more efficient tax plan. I wanna quickly look at a third scenario here, which is kind of a second layer. As all of you know that have followed our channel for a bit, I think the RSP meltdown is the number one way to pay CRA less money. And this video is all about saving taxes. So I took this scenario one step further. And we've been able to increase their income to $69,675, which is about 2000 almost $2,000 after tax in their pocket more on an annual basis than it was before. And if I go to the tax bill, this adjustment, it increased their total tax payable, $197,000, um, but still less than that original scenario. And this is where it's important to note that, like you have to look at what is the total tax I'm paying, but to me, the primary fact is, how many, how much dollars do I have in my pocket after tax is spent? That's really at the end of the day what we care about. If we can also pay CRA less money along the way, that's great too. But you build up this nest egg to make sure that you have the most after tax inflation adjusted dollar in your pocket. So in this scenario, we've been able to bump up their income by $2,000 after tax every year and still keep their total tax paid for, you know, through retirement to under 200,000. So we're saving tax, but again, we're putting a lot of money back in their pocket versus that original scenario. So how do we do this? So all we've done here is we've delayed the CPP to age 70. And you know, a lot of people wanna take their CPP early. They feel they, you know, it just makes sense. But again, run these numbers with your financial planner. I've left the RSP or the RIF withdrawal at 25,000. We've increased it to 30 now. So that kind of meltdown error. So because we don't have CPP payments between 65 and 70, we've ramped up the RIF withdrawal a little bit here. And the same thing if we look at roof side, you know, it's that 30, then we've ramped it up to 35 and then we scale it back. So we're kind of replacing some of that uh, CPP income with the RIF income, leveling out that tax bill quite well. But again, that money in their pocket is substantial. Now, what we typically will do here is we'll export it to an Excel spreadsheet. And I've done that previously here. So I wanna highlight the nominal income. Now, what nominal income is, is this column here. This is the actual amount of income they're gonna have in their pocket after tax on an annual basis. The real dollar is what it's worth today, adjusted to inflation. If we go back to the original plan, the nominal dollar amount, so the, the money they're gonna collect after tax in their pocket for spending through the retirement, works out to $2.7 million. If we go to that planning scenario, which doesn't have the CPP delayed, it works out to 2.717. So $17,000 more in their pocket just from that. Again, we haven't added any more assets, we're just kind of adjusting how you do things. As soon as we bump CPP, create a bit more of an RSP meltdown, it bumps up to $2.777 million. That's $77,000 more in the client's pocket through retirement than their original plan of, hey, let's avoid paying tax for two to three years and then leave it for later on. So again, I wanna make sure you understand how much tax planning matters in retirement, even if it's a fairly basic example like this or it's more complex. So obviously, the more complex, the more money you have, the potential for more tax savings. Again, typically our plans will save well north of $100,000. This is a very basic plan. Again, 77,000 of after-tax money, bit of tax savings. There's, you know, we run into six figures here, but typically we see two, three, four, 500,000 plus of tax savings, more money in the pocket. It can be drastic. So make sure you don't overlook tax advantages that you have available to you as you enter to retirement. 
So let's start saving money, pay Siri less, put more money back in your pocket. We'll see you in the next video.